to week 22. The rain came, then the sun came. But did Goy come? We'll find out in a moment whether Goy, head painter, turned up. Whilst Liz continues to project manage Esper's refit in Thailand, I spent a week on the east coast of the UK in Suffolk. For those not familiar with ancient British history, Suffolk gets its name from South Folk of the Kingdom of East Anglia, which was formed in the 5th century. Suffolk is often referred to as Constable Country, where the sweeping cloudscapes are reminiscent of John Constable's famous paintings from the 19th century. The coast between Sizewell and Woodbridge is an old family haunt, and we've been coming here for 40 years. We spent a few days in the House in the Clouds, a converted water tower in the village of Thorpness, and took obligatory walks to Aldborough. Another area we know well is the River Deben that runs out of Woodbridge, and it is on the Deben, in the village of Waldringfield, that our friends Emma and Mark, accompanied by their two sons Tom and George, recently bought a new venture. We first met them in Turkey as liverboards, but as Tom and George approached high school age they returned to the UK. I popped in to catch up with them and find out how they moved from liverboards in Turkey to their new life in Suffolk. Now I'm here in a little village called Waldringfield, which is just south of Suffolk. And last week someone posted a comment up on our website that they had just bought the boatyard here. So, on a whim, I thought I'd come down and see if I can find our old friends Mark and Emma of Sailing Yacht Cowrie. I don't know if they're in today, but uh, I figured we'd just uh, pay them a surprise visit. So let's go and see if we can find them. Oh, now there's Emma. I seem to recognise Emma. Hello. Hello, Jamie. How are you? Hi. Good to see you. A little surprise visit. Yeah. I've got you on video as well. You? Yeah. Not, not, not my <laughs> best looking, side, obviously. Oh, I don't know about that. How are you? Good. So yeah, come give us a tour. Not. What's going on? How did this all happen? How did this all happen? Do you know, as I wrote to you, I thought, did I actually, should we ever get around to telling you before the boat yard? No, probably not. Just in a comment on our website. Yeah, no. How did it happen? It happened because when we were around the bed, we were like, what would your ideal job be? And Mark said it would be to run a boat yard. And then this came up for sale, so we bought it. Of course, a visit wouldn't have been a visit without first going on the water. So we dropped Tom and his cousin off, who took advantage of the breeze to go for an afternoon sail. Meanwhile, I chatted to Mark about their new venture. As you well know, we did our sailing trip with you guys and uh, we did the Emir, uh, had a fantastic time, but uh, the boys were growing up, so we, we, uh, you know, they were teenagers and we felt it was time to come home to go back to mainstream school, uh, which they did and they've thrived at. Um, but I was always been very, I've been very unsettled since we got back. After doing a, an extended sailing trip, it's very, very difficult to set up to a, a sort of real job <laughs> and I've bounced from everything from a handyman to doing renewable energies and, and this sort of thing um, but what I most enjoyed was when I could do work on boats which I, I did a bit in various yards up and down the river here and then I heard that this yard had come on the market and uh, the yard we've bought is uh, called Waldringfield Boatyard it's on the, the River Deben it's about halfway down the River Deben from Woodbridge it's uh, quite a small yard but uh, the one good thing it has really going for it is that the moorings don't dry out. Most of our river moorings here um, dry and that causes a, a real problem that people can't get to where they want to go but ours don't. So uh, and the, the previous owner basically had decided he was going to retire at, a, at 60 I think and from 55 onwards he basically ran the yard down. So we, we bought a yard that really wasn't uh, at its, its peak um, but quite quickly we found that people want to use the facilities that we offer and uh, we've managed to build it right back up and here we are at Wolverinefield Boatyard. So tell us about those facilities then. Well we've got three parts to the business really. Um, the first one would be the moorings. Uh, we lease the moorings off the, uh, the Crown, after the Crown Estates. We have 52 deep water river moorings uh, and those are rented out to boats up to 36, 38 foot. Um, 
and they basically the season for those is from the 1st of April to the end of October and um, when they come out of the, uh, the water in the winter we lift them out uh, and we'll pressure wash them down and then they'll be put in cradles for the winter in the, depending on the size, if they are over 26 foot we'll put them in a cradle in the bottom yard here on the quay. If they're a little bit smaller than that we'll take them up to the top yard but we essentially lift about 80 boats in the winter and store those so that's the second part of the business but during the summer months we also run a, a trip boat uh, which uh, takes uh, tourists uh, from here at Waldring Field all the way to Felixstowe Ferry which is about seven miles downstream and um, we last year I think we took 3,000 tourists and this year we'll probably be doing nearer 4,000 Wow. Uh, and that's a great little business that just keeps us really the cash flow ticking over in the summer. Uh, other sides to the business that we've sort of tried to develop is we're sitting here in, a, in an artist's studio, uh, belongs to Claudia Myatt and uh, she's put all her artwork on the walls and we've opened it as a little gift shop so it sort of goes alongside with the trip boat. When the, when the trippers come off the boat they'll come in the shop here um, and they've got ice cream and they've got gifts and what have you so that's a nice little sideline to the business which my wife Emma runs um, and the other thing we've, we've done is also we bought some sit on top kayaks so it's a fantastic river to explore by kayak because you can get in all the creeks and, and up, uh, up all the little waterways um, so we hire out the kayaks which is very popular at the weekend we've got a pub uh, on, well, we've got a pub right next door, but we've also got a pub about two miles, three miles up, uh, downstream sorry, uh, called the Ramsholt Arms, so that's easy kayaking distance. Uh, and if not, you can go the other way, right up into Woodbridge with a kayak. So that's mm. very popular and becoming more so. So that, that's the business, really. Yeah, but, uh, very nice way to live your life. You've got to admit, that's a pretty good lifestyle. And if you can't live on the water, then the next best thing is to be next to the water. Meanwhile, back in Thailand, Monday morning and here's the boat after her third gloss area. So all the gloss has now been applied. I uh, have to say she's looking fantastic. There are one or two spots that need sorting out. Uh, which they're going to do today. They're going to check every single piece and then I'm going to come back and have another look. But the most important thing about today is look who's here. And he's going to be here, he says, until the end, until all the painting's done, he's going to be here with us. So welcome back, boy. As they mark off the deck, they're checking every single square centimetre of the paintwork so that they know what they need to do to make any adjustments and changes. They won't do anything until they've laid the non-skid surface. So once that's down, they'll then go around and do any buffing or repainting or touching up that might need doing. Since Goy's been away, he's not familiar with how the deck's looking, so he's taking extra special care as he goes round to familiarise himself with each piece of the deck. The woodwork's getting sanded and that grey caulking we put in is starting to look fantastic. Of course one of the things I've realised as Ton was doing this is that we've still got this little hole, this little brass hole here that came with the boat when we bought it and it was where the table leg, the old table leg, 
um, secured to the cockpit floor because we don't need it now so we're going to see if Master Pong can fill it some way without it showing too much So after a week off, while the painters did their job, Pong is back. His job for today is he's going to mark out and he's going to cut out that laminate that we bought, which is going to go in the, in the head's floor and in the galley. A little easier to see it now, it's a lovely uh, slaty grey, it's actually called soapstone. It's really great to see the new worktop surface which is now in position in the galley. When you see it against the grey of the metallic I think you'll agree it works really well. Pong tells us that it was so hard to cut that he says this will last forever and nothing is going to dent it so let's hope Pong is right. So we've just opened every single box and everything is there, yeah? Yeah, so we're very happy. Oh look what came out of the boxes, it was like Christmas earlier. I've got a few of those, that's our repeater. A few bits and pieces, on that was the cables. Underneath the ram. There's a big box here which has got the radar in it and this is our fantastic new Zeus 12 brain of the boat and in that bag that comes with it is just the instructions, the user manual, blimey. And then for the first time in Esper's history she is going to have a chart plotter in the cockpit and there it is. Oh. Very exciting. The hull has now had four layers of epoxy on it and two layers of gotamastic. So before we put the next layer of gotamastic, there will be four in total, on, the guys are now sanding very carefully all over the hull to make it as uh, smooth as possible. And they're using 120 sandpaper, nice and fine sandpaper, so they don't take too much of it off but they do take the worst of the lumps and the bumps off and to be honest there aren't many. The hull has now had its fourth coat of Jotamastic which is yellow as you can see. First two coats were grey, last two coats were yellow. So today we're just uh, sanding this back till it's nice and smooth, ready for perhaps one more coat of Jotomastic. We may just put one more on and then after that it'll be ready to uh, receive the anti foul and that won't happen until closer to launch date. I am told that we are getting very near the end of the varnishing of the floorboards. Everything's been done, just one layer left to do on the whole of the boat, apart from the cabin which needs two layers. So they put a total of seven layers of varnish on, which they then sand back and reapply. First rung of the ladder, the companionway ladder steps with their third coat of varnish on. You can really see the grain coming out now on that classic deep orangey brown teak colour. 
The sides are slightly darker as you can see and this is because when Pong cut each step he actually carved it out of a piece of wood so these had to be cut into this shape which means you've got different layers and levels of grain and that higher level there was darker than the inner level but I like it, I think it gives it a wet, slightly weathered effect very slight Satoon is predominantly Muslim area, but we sometimes forget that this is actually a Buddhist country. And today is Buddha's day. So over in this little corner of the yard, where they haul the boats in and out, they're going to make new and special offerings to Buddha for good luck for, for them and for all the boats that come here. So Buddha gets some very nice, sweet, brightly coloured cakes, a very bright pink drink, a very bright green drink, and a lot of tender loving care. This is the first time I've ever seen him without his hat on. This is an extremely fit and hard-working young man who helps take the boats in and out on the cage and he's taking this all very seriously under Un's supervision That's it 